Are you still in the market for a new GPU? Well, here's another one. Let's do this. Andy, what are you watching? It's, uh, it's, it's not what you think. Wow, it's so big. Why, thank you. It's the new AOC AG493 UCX. 49 inches of pure performance and a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It's so fast. You can even do two at a time. What? You can connect two devices at a time and split the screen. With FreeSync Premium Pro, a 32 to nine aspect ratio and a built-in KVM, you'll be finished in no time. Gaming, I mean. What, what did you think I mean? Get your mind out of the gutter and click the link in the description to find out more. Just a few days ago, we saw the launch of the 3080 Ti, a card that is basically nigh on identical to the RTX 3090, but with half the amount of VRAM. I mean, it's so similar that in some of our tests, it was actually beating the 3090, albeit by a small margin. Still, this kind of, I don't know, paves the way of extreme performance, even at higher resolutions, for, I guess, a much more affordable price point. Or so we thought. Just before the launch, and we do actually have a video going through all of it, UK retailer CCL Online decided to join the scalpers at listing the £1,100, $1,100 kind of cards for around a whopping £3,000. I mean, come on, it's not even funny anymore. And us, as well as other media outlets, have stressed that, well, in our honest opinion, you should boycott the likes of CCL to show them that, well, they simply just can't get away with it. So moving back on to today, the other card that Nvidia announced at their virtual Computex keynote address is finally here. And that of course is the RTX 3070 Ti. And as you can see, we have three of them. Sadly again, no founders edition for us, is there? Nvidia, thanks for that. So before I jump into, I guess, what each model here actually has to offer, let's talk about the 3070 Ti GPU as a whole and kind of what it has to offer. So first off, Nvidia were keen to compare it to the 2070 Super, which I guess makes this the natural successor. But we do have a whole host of other cards to compare it to in a bunch of synthetic benchmarks, as well as the latest titles a little later on. Now, one key thing, and I didn't even know if I wanted to kind of include it in the video, is pricing. I don't really want to talk about it because, well, you know, it sucks. But Nvidia are claiming a starting from price of 599 US dollars. So you'll likely be expecting to come in between, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 bucks, if you can even get it in the first place. But I mean, regardless of price, what do you actually get for your money? Well, to start with, you get eight gig of GDDR6X memory compared to the eight gig of GDDR6 on the RTX 3070. It does have the same 256 bit memory interface, but where things do get interesting is the 6,144 CUDA cores compared to 5,888 on the 3070. You get a 1770 megahertz boost clock, which is the same as the 2070 Super, and an improved 1188 megahertz memory clock, giving us the same 19 gigabits per second as its bigger brother, the RTX 3080 Ti. Now, as with the 3080 Ti, it's kind of not really all about speeds and clocks, but more of how everything comes together and the extra throughput that the GDDR6 memory actually gives us. So we have three models here today, starting with the Inno 3D 3070 Ti X3 OC. Now, it's been a little while since we've had a look at anything from Inno 3D, especially in the UK as, well, they've been pretty quiet for the last couple of kind of big launches, but they do claim to be back and in a big way. So it's quite refreshing to see something new, even if I guess they've been around for quite some time now. So in all honesty, it's a pretty understated design with a two slot cooler, which is sporting three 90 millimeter fans. Nothing kind of really out of the ordinary though, the smaller design does make it actually a better option for those with ITX or smaller form factor builds where normally size may kind of be a bit of an issue. If anything, due to the brushed metal look, the simple looking backplate and the overall kind of understated design, feels like Inno 3D are trying to go for the, I don't know, no frills approach. I mean, you won't find any RGB or any gaming branding. So let's hope that's reflected in the price as you'll simply be paying for the sheer performance from the GPU and also, of course, what Inno 3D has been able to do to keep things cool and quiet. Power-wise, it has two 8-pin connectors and it comes with three DisplayPort connectors and a single HDMI port, much like the Founders Edition. In terms of the specs, this is the OC model, so it has a very modest overclock of 15 MHz on the boost clock, bringing it up to 1785 MHz. So, I mean, 
come on, it's not groundbreaking, I have to be honest. But again, if the price is able to be competitive, I mean, you could be onto a winner with this one. So the second card is the Palette Game Rock OC, which I know is kind of a bit of a Marmite card as some people will love the design and others will think it's a kind of cheap looking light show. I kind of like it just because, well, it's different. I mean, we first saw this design on the RTX 3080. So if you want to find out more about the kind of cooler design, definitely check that video out that we did of that. I mean, it can of course be controlled to kind of tie it in with the rest of your system. And there are similar products on the market to match the design, like the G-Skill Trident Royal and the Ice Gem AIO from Silverstone. Compared to the 3080 we looked at, the card is basically the same in terms of the design. Though the two eight pin connectors have kind of been shifted slightly towards the middle of the card, which may cause some concern with cable management, but I mean, it would, I don't know, it wouldn't be any worse than a founder's card in all honesty. Connection wise, it's exactly the same as the NO 3D with three display ports and a single HDMI port. It also comes with a dual BIOS to move things from silent mode to performance mode with the flick of a switch, which will consequently change the boost speed of the card and therefore the thermals. Now, talking about kind of boost speed, this card takes the true meaning of overclock by pushing that all important boost speed up from the stock, like we see on the Founders Edition, 1,770 megahertz to a stonking 1,845 megahertz. So we're actually expecting some great results from the palette card, but with that large funky cooler and dazzling lights, you will be expected to pay I don't know, a slight premium over a more basic model. Luckily, if you do want something on the cheaper side, Palette kind of have you covered there with the Gaming Pro model. So if you don't want to spend this money, there's that one for you. So the third and final card is the Aorus Master from Gigabyte. Now, we're normally sent a game in OC model of which there is one for the 3070 Ti and is generally regarded by us as that kind of happy medium ground of offering great performance for not much more money over MSRP. Whatever that is these days. The Aorus Master, however, is further up the stack, normally kind of situated under the extreme, but from our own findings and speaking to Gigabyte directly, there won't actually be a 3070 Ti Extreme, and instead Gigabyte have reserved that for the 3080 and above. Now, first thing you're gonna notice, this is huge. I mean, absolutely huge. In terms of the design, where do you even start? It's a real standout looking card and is beefy to boot. It will actually take up kind of 2.5, possibly even three slots in your case. And it features two 115 millimeter fans and one 100 millimeter fan, which feature a unique blade stack with wind claw design. I mean, buzzwords aside, that basically means they have ridges in the blades and they stack over each other. They also alternate their rotation to provide extra air pressure while reducing turbulence from each adjacent fan. It's always one of those hard things to test, but I mean, we're sure Gigabyte have done their own R&D. Otherwise, why would they even bring that feature to market? In terms of clock speeds, it's the fastest card of the three, coming with a boost clock of 1875 MHz, so we're expecting it to be slightly ahead of the pallet card. Now what would an Aorus card be without RGB? The top and the bottom of the card have a small strip each, as well as the Aorus logo on the rear of the card, which can all be controlled through RGB Fusion 2.0. On top of this though is the small LCD screen which can be customised to show temperature figures, custom text, images and even GIFs to add, I don't know, just that extra level of an extra touch of personalization. On the rear of the card is a dual BIOS switch, again, to toggle between the OC and silent BIOS modes if you fancy a slightly quieter experience when gaming. Now, one cool feature that is nice to see are the power indicators, which simply provide a visual representation for each power connector. And it just makes troubleshooting just, well, frankly, a breeze. Other brands have actually been doing this for a while, but it's still a welcome addition to any card from any brand. Gigabyte have also taken the outputs one step further with a total of six split evenly between HDMI and DisplayPort connectors. So with each card aside, who is the RTX 3070 Ti even aimed at? I mean, we all know the 3070 is a solid performer when it comes to 1440p gaming at the highest settings, even in the latest titles, with the inclusion of ray tracing and DLSS and all that other good stuff that you get from the Ampere architecture. But can the 3070 Ti really add upon that success without kind of getting too close to the 3080 and of course rendering it a useless proposition when looking at price to performance. Well, of course, there's only one way to find out. Let's take a look at those glorious benchmarks.
So there we have it, the 3070 Ti in kind of all its glory. Well, three of them actually. Now, when I end up getting three cards of kind of varying specs and different price points, it's always a tough one to compare as it's not kind of a one size fits all solution. I mean, some are, I guess, better than others, but kind of for different reasons. None of the cards are bad per se, but so much of it, I guess, really comes down to you as an individual, your kind of needs and your budget. And I mean, straight off the bat, let's talk about the 3070 Ti as a GPU, taking all of these different cards just completely out of the equation for one second. Firstly, when comparing against the RTX 3070, the price point disparity is around $100 if we're comparing MSRPs and <clears throat> starting from prices. I mean, in all honesty, it's hard to keep a straight face when I even think about pricing because we've seen them all over the place as of late. So, I don't know, in my honest opinion, it's kind of an unfair way to judge things at the moment, but stick with me. Now, the big question that you have to ask is, am I getting $100 more performance, give or take, for my money? I mean, looking at synthetic benchmarks, we saw a nice increase of around 1,000 points across most tests. When it came to gaming, at all three resolutions and with RTX or DLSS or even a combination of the two enabled, we saw between three and eight frames per second increase on the 3070 Ti compared to the 3070. I mean, come on guys, whether that's kind of worth it for you, well, really it's down to you personally. Now, if you are actually rocking something, I don't know, maybe slightly older, like a 2070 Super, well, then the 3070 Ti definitely seems like a worthy successor, with us seeing upwards of a 50 frame per second increase at 1080p and around 30 frames per second at 4K in most titles. Now, I don't want to take away from the fact the RTX 2070 Super, it's not a bad card by any stretch of the imagination, but the 3070 Ti just improves on that, especially when looking at playing the latest titles on high settings and enabling the likes of ray tracing functionality. Again, pricing wise, you're looking at $100 over the 2070 Super when looking at kind of what each card launched at. But again, <laughs> If anything in this world right now, things are costing more money than all they ever have done in the past. Now, while I'm, while I'm sure kind of Nvidia are, I guess, aiming the 3070 Ti directly at 1440p gamers, it does go to show that the inclusion of GDDR6X really does allow you to you know, kind of push the envelope, even at 4K with everything turned on. Now, obviously, a lot of this is, I don't know, kind of title dependent, but with the broad spectrum of titles that we actually tested with, it definitely kind of gives for, I don't know, an interesting view, an interesting take on just how things are at the moment. So what about AMD? Well, the 6800 launched at $579 MSRP, so about kind of the same. And in terms of performance, it does actually beat the 3070 Ti in most standard rasterization based games, sometimes only by a few frames per second, other times by quite a margin. But with titles already out and coming out that are geared towards kind of AMD more than Nvidia and vice versa, I mean, so much of it is really down to what games you're playing as an individual and which brand is gonna be kind of better for those particular titles. Obviously, when it comes to ray tracing, and as we know, Nvidia are, well, you know, all in when it comes to it, they kind of do still have, I guess, the upper hand. They've had longer with the technology, so that is expected. And performance wise, well, it's only ever gonna get better as time goes on with drivers getting updates and game developers even working directly with Nvidia and so on. Again, and uh, well, I can't really stress this enough, right now, in all honesty, it feels like no matter what side of the GPU battle you're on, and even then drilling down into kind of each individual brand, so much of it comes down to which one you can afford personally, and which one, I guess, I don't know, is in stock at the time of actually looking to buy it. It's really that clear cut and simple. So I guess really it comes down to the three models I've got here. What about these three models? I mean, I'm gonna go out on a limb, and uh, don't hate me for it, waiting for the comments now, Andy. I'm gonna go out on a limb, and this is obviously kind of me speculating to some degree because I haven't really been told anything, but I'm pretty confident in saying that the Inno3D is gonna be close to the starting price of 599 US dollars. The palette is gonna be, well, slightly faster, and you know, having that blingy RGB, it's gonna bump that price up just a little more. And then the Aorus Master being frankly huge, having an LCD screen on it, being even faster still, is likely to be probably even more expensive. I mean, as Jensen Huang would likely say, if he was sitting here, you pay more, you get more. That's my impression. 
Drilling down a bit further though, each card is great in its own right. And it's kind of catered for very different types of users, depending on kind of what you want. The no kind of frills option from Inno 3D, although it will be a little louder. The kind of in your face design from Palette that you're either I don't know, love or hate or the big chungus of a card from Gigabyte Aurus with that extra level of customization while kind of also keeping the core and memory at a cool and fairly quiet level for a sustained period of time. So uh, yeah, I guess the big question, as always, should you get one? Should you, I don't know, go for something else? Should you just completely write it off? So many questions and frankly, so many bloody answers. With the whole GPU saga that's kind of going on and the lack of GPUs in general, and then when are they available? What price would they be? I mean, I mentioned earlier that you can't even trust most retailers these days with them profiteering to just crazy levels. And this leaves me in a situation where I kind of have to leave it to you guys. I mean, I guess I'll leave you with this. If you want your no frills option, there is something for you. If you want something unique, there's something for that. If you want a beast that doesn't compromise on features and is just massive, then yeah, again, there's something for that. There's so much choice right now that can really harness the true potential of the 3070 Ti Core. But again, you probably won't ever have it in your hands, at least for the foreseeable future. I'm sorry guys, but that's just, I don't know, kind of how it is and I know it sucks. Hopefully you didn't think this video sucked. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, if you did like this video, you know exactly what to do. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.